I love the story about the mom and the Hitler Youth mm. program, and then her fourth daughter, was that right? The fourth of five became a Hasidic Jew. Which was, I would love to talk more to that woman and, and talk to the sister. You know what? <laughs> you know, was it a specific reaction? Guilt she had, you know, the sins of her mother? Yes, acting on the shame. Acting on the shame that made her do that? Or did she fall in love with the Jew first? I mean, would love to know. I mean, really, we should write that play. Yes. Um, and fascinating that mom didn't go to this daughter's wedding because she was not marrying a Catholic and yet is willing to, so years later, yeah. deal with a much more extreme situation. And I would love to talk to the mother, you know, did she go to her Jewish daughter's wedding as a form of assuaging her guilt? Retribution. I mean, I mean, is that the right word? Retribu you know, um, expiation. Expiation. Right. I also loved this last woman, Bobby, who had seen it three times, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. saw it in South Africa. It's amazing to me how many people have seen it more than once. So many me people too. bring me someone too. back, want to share it with someone. I've met now a number of people who have seen it three times. Once in Milwaukee and then twice here. I don't know how they managed to get two tickets to this play. but um, And I just was reading about, uh, I was reading uh, a South African magazine interviewed Pamela about her experience going back because she she you know like 10 years later she went back to South Africa and performed this play and it was so moving because she said she was performing to mixed audiences and that wouldn't have been possible when she was growing up that wouldn't have been possible when she was growing up and she was really nervous about how the blacks would uh, receive the play. Mm. And she said, you know, she finished the play and everybody, and this, you know, the blacks and whites all got to their feet crying. Mm. And she said, she, I'm going to get teary, but she said she was so overcome, she didn't quite realize what it was going to mean to her. Mm -hmm. So when they were, she spoke their experiences, you know. So she, at the end, got down on her knees and she touched the ground and kissed the ground. <laughs> In front of, in front of these people, applauding her, and I just, oh God, I mean it's so powerful. I, I um, storytelling is so important and so powerful. It's just interesting. I mean, it's, 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 it's storytelling and you know filmmaking and plays are powerful on the other end too. The propaganda end, you know. I mean. All propagandists will tell you that, you know, you just need to say something often enough, right? And people will begin to repeat it and then believe it. And, uh, you know, you see some of those Nazi films about the evil Jews. and But I do feel like it's, it's, our, it's, it's our civic duty and right to tell these stories. Absolutely. And I to go to. to the theater. And to go to the <laughs> theater and to listen to public radio because people can come in, can call in and tell their stories. Something else I wanted to say, and I just, I remember sitting in the car a while back and there was a, a, a program on um, about homophobia. And you were talking about um, uh, the, what's his name, Girls Don't Cry, um, Matt. The, the young man, the young woman who was dressed like a... I know. Yes, oh, anyway. Mean, yeah. So, so, the, so the, this program here, uh, it might have even been here on Earth, was talking about homophobia. I think it was. And this man called in, and he said, I just want to apologize, because when I was a teenager, I committed, he said, I suppose I committed hate crimes. I persecuted gay men in my in my high school and college. And hearing this story shames me. And I just want to call, and I don't even know who I'm apologizing to, but I want to apologize. And I couldn't move. I was just, you couldn't help but be so moved by that. But you need those triggers. You need those triggers. You need to hear people's stories. You need to relate. And you need to hear and recognize that human being is a human being. That human being is of my flesh and blood. Mm -hmm. And there's very little difference between us. 
And then you also, I think, need to be able to tell your own story. So you can call into public radio and tell your story. I just think it's genius. <laughs> Thank you both very, very much. Thank you.